In this lesson, I'll show you how to graph a secant function. We obtain the graph of y is equal to secant x by taking reciprocals of the y values in the graph y is equal to cosine x. Vertical asymptotes of y is equal to secant x occurs at the x-intercepts of y is equal to cosine x. The question reads, graph y is equal to 2 secant 2x for the intervals negative 3 pi over 4 and positive 3 pi over 4. To do this, we need to graph this equation as if it was in terms of cosine. So we have y is equal to 2 cosine 2x. Once we've graphed y is equal to 2 cosine 2x, then we can find out where our asymptotes are, which will be where the wave crosses the x-axis. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start by graphing 2 cosine 2x from scratch. We have an amplitude of 2 and we have a b value of 2. Using our b value, we can find our period with the formula 2 pi over b. If I replace this 2 into this b, I end up with 2 pi over 2, and that is equal to pi. So our period, one cycle, will occur within pi radians. That being said, the next thing that I'll do is find out five critical points of this wave. And I can do that by dividing this by 4. This will represent the quadrants. If I divide this by 4, this means that we'll have a point at pi over 4. We'll have another point at pi over 4 plus pi over 4, which is 2 pi over 4. And if we reduce that down, it becomes pi over 2. If I add pi over 4 to pi over 2, I end up with 3 pi over 4. And another pi over 4 added to this gives me my period of pi. And given the way cosine looks when you graph it, it always starts off at 1. And in our case, our amplitude is 2. So this y coordinate will be 2 instead of 1. And then it goes down to the x-intercept. It reaches its minimum halfway in the cycle right here. And then it starts to go back up, it reaches another x-intercept right here, and it goes back up. Now in this particular equation y is equal to 2 cosine 2x, we don't have a phase shift. And if you don't have a c value, which in our case we don't, there's no phase shift. So we don't have to worry about that. They want us to graph this between negative 3 pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So we have to stop graphing after this point. And this happens to be one of our x-intercepts. This means that we will have an asymptote right here. In addition, we'll have another asymptote right here because this is your x-intercept. Let's continue graphing this this way. So it will eventually go down, and this will be negative pi over 4. This will be negative pi over 2. This will be negative 3 pi over 4. And this will be pi, or negative pi. So I'll continue graphing this. It will reach another minimum right here, and then it will make its way up here. Everything after this, everything to the left of this point, doesn't matter because that's outside of our intervals. We will have another asymptote here and another one here. Now, according to the description up here, that we have to take the y values and take the reciprocal. So if I took the reciprocal of this y coordinate, which is negative 2, I would still get negative 2. This means that for secant, your maximum will be the minimum of cosine. So this was one of the minimums of the cosine. Our maximum will be this. And it will go up to its maximum, reach its maximum, and then down again. The opposite is true for the maximum of cosines. This is the maximum of this cosine. It will serve as the minimum of secant. It will go like this and make its way up. Of course, it will never cross the asymptotes. And the same thing goes for this minimum point. What you see in brown represents the graph of 2 secant 2x. And there you have it. That is how to graph a secant function.